Summertime Shy is summering. It's been a fun time and we're going to continue enjoying the summer. Best time to be. Uh, it's your girl Sharon, aka. Hello. Hello, hello. There's a delay in my start. Sorry about that. But anyway, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon and Nostalgic Runner. And we are back again for um, kind of another Get Fit With Me series presents accountability, but I'm also going to be combining. Um, the U.S. Olympic trials and what's taken place so far. So for those who follow my reviews, I did mention, besides reviewing The Real Housewives of um, Orange County, that's coming up soon, I'm also going to be reviewing the Olympics. And that does include the U.S. Olympic trials. So because I'm from the United States, so we're going to be covering that. Um, in the past, I will say this, and this is how nerdy I get sometimes. I actually sometimes do follow the Jamaican trials because um, you can find them on YouTube or whatever, just because I want to know what the sprint is going to be like for the Olympics. And I don't think their trials, because all countries' Olympic trials are not always at the same time. So you can kind of figure it out. I know um, Kenya already had some of their, I think they already had their Olympic trials or they're having them right now. Um, <clears throat> So yeah, anyway, I do sometimes follow other countries' Olympic trials just to see what's going to be taking place, but I'm just not going to be doing that this time just because <laughs> I feel like number one is going to be too much and it's already a lot while I'm covering when it comes to the Olympic trials for the United States because even though I'm not going to be highlighting or stating what happened with the rounds, I watch all of it. I even watch the field. I just do. And the thing is, I start, I did not start off as someone who cared about the, the field part, track and field. But the more and more I watch it, because for those who are not as familiar, the Olympics, yes. The Summer Olympics happen every four years. So a lot of people who are not track and field fans, your casual fans, I think a lot of them think this is the only time that these people compete. That's very false. Um, they compete every year. <laughs> um, so in between Olympic years are world championships. So they still have national championships, which is what the Olympic trials essentially are. Um, the Olympic trials are also the world championship, are also like the U.S. championships to qualify them into the world championships, similar to what they do for the Olympics. Um, so that there's a little history with that. Um, and then also too, for those who don't quite make it to the Olympics, whether it be not even being able to do the relay or anything like that, um, a lot of these elite athletes will still complete in road races for like those who are like mid distance, long distance runners. And then if they don't get into the Olympics, um, there's also the diamond lead. Um, the diamond lead though, usually when it is an Olympic year, they do suspend um, doing the diamond lead circuit a little bit to allow athletes time to do both because some because of course it's a lot more money in that circuit's pocket for an Olympian to be able to compete in that event. So they into some of their events because that's like based off of points is points racing, kind of like circuit racing. Um, I don't know how to explain that to people who are non-runners because um, <laughs> you can actually do that even as a non-elite runner. Um, like around here, we have Kara races and you just you do as many of those races and you try to accumulate points. Now, you can do them by trying to do all the races and get a lot of points, which for Chicago races and with this economy, I would not recommend. <laughs> or... If you're someone who's decent enough where you can place in these races, which a lot of these races, especially in the major city here, they're pretty major enough where it's going to be a little bit more difficult to place, then that also helps with your points too. So there's that. Um, the Diamond League is similar to that, but just the only level of that. Yeah. Anyway, let, let me tell you a little bit about how my weekend went and how I'm doing with my training, and then we'll go into... On um, the Olympic trials. Okay, 
So I am still doing okay when it comes to my um, training for the ultra. Um, I did not get my long run in this weekend um, because I actually had to work today. <laughs> so it didn't happen. I am going to try to get it in either tomorrow. Well, a mid long run tomorrow. I'm going to try to do eight miles tomorrow. And then Tuesday, I'm going to try to get in the 16. And if I don't do that on Tuesday, I will unfortunately have to do it while I'm back at home. <laughs> and, um, you know, I'm going to be seeing family. Only reason why I'm saying it's unfortunate is because it's going to be much warmer there than here. <laughs> and where, and one thing about where I live in Chicago, I'm very close to the lake. And even when it's really, really hot around the lake, if you're right by the lake like I am, it doesn't feel as hot. It's once you're no longer close to the lake, it, there's like a easily five to, five to sometimes 10 degree difference. And it's like that also in the winter months too, for those who are not familiar. Um, so also is not the greatest in the winter months. So in the winter months, that lake is cold. <laughs> so I'm either, so in the summer months, I'm usually deceptively cooler than what it actually is outside because I'm by the lake. And once I get far further away from the lake, I'm like, oh gosh, it's really, really hot. Or in the winter months, I have the problem where it's like, oh my gosh, it is so cold. But then once I get out past the lake, I'm like, oh, it's actually not horrible. It's not good, but it's not horrible. So that's kind of what's going on with that. So um, besides that, my weekend has been good. Um, I had, I went to a friend's birthday dinner on Friday, so that was a good time. And then the Friday before that, I went to a friend's get together at his place. He had like a barbecue, um, not barbecue, but like a grill out type thing, like a bonfire type situation. So the summer's been summering, been having a good time. Um, also been trying to get my runs in. I also biked again. My biking is getting better. I'm noticing I'm getting faster. Um, so I think triathlon season, at least when it comes to the, the triathlon I'm going to be doing, I think I'll be okay. I don't know if I mentioned before, but I'm just going to do the one. I'm not going to do the Chicago Super Sprint Triathlon anymore just because I really do want to focus on getting my base back for running. And for me, it doesn't make sense for me to be trying to focus on too many disciplines at once. I essentially really am using this triathlon I'm doing that I do every year to kind of just do the cross training since I'm not really wanting to go to the gym as much. I can tell I don't want to go to the gym as much. Like honestly, I haven't been in a while. I'm going to try to go in July. I'm making myself go to the gym. Um, outside swimming, you know, I am going to start swimming next week because that's another thing. I'm about two weeks delayed on starting my swimming, but I am going to get to it this week. Um, when I go back home, there's a, there's a place I can swim at that's has a really, really nice pool. So I should be good to go. So that's what's going on with that. Um, anyway, so, oh, and I also have been getting my walks in. So I've been trying to get my steps in. I have been averaging a little less than 70,000 steps a week. Um, the goal is 10,000 a day. So we're going to get there. Um, I know, especially once the mileage starts really increasing, we're going to definitely get there. Um, but it's a work in progress. Uh, so then the other thing is, um, I do get my foot looked at tomorrow to see just a quadruple check. I'm not making like causing more problems just because my foot still doesn't feel quite normal yet. Um, not the one that I had an issue with last year, but the other one. <laughs> um, I just want to double, I just want to make sure I'm not causing any more problems. And if I am, I'm going to have to make more adjustments because I am still going to do the races. <laughs> I just will have to make adjustments on how I approach it. So there's that. Anyway, so that's enough about me and my running. Let's talk about the people who get paid for this. <laughs> so if you're new to really paying attention to the Olympics, welcome. Uh, I'm by no means an elite athlete. I'm just a very huge fan of the sport. Even before I was a runner, I was very much someone who followed track and field. That's like one of the things that bonded my dad and I. Like 
we watch track and field. Like, it's been a thing since I was a little girl. Like, I, I watch Flojo. That I am giving my age away right there. I watched Carl Lewis, also giving my age away. <laughs> I watched Jackie Joyner Kirsty, and I'm still kind of a fangirl of hers. I, that is actually on my bucket list. I want to meet her. Um, I've watched Meb, so Distance Runners. Met Meb. Literally froze and freaked out when I met Meb. Um, yeah, I've met Shalane Flanagan before. Um, never met Desi. Um, and then I did see, um, not a non-American, but I still love her because the melanin of it all. Um, oh, I can't remember her name. She won the Chicago Marathon, set the course for Stefan Hassan, that's her name. And I remembered it after I did this video. I was actually really tired doing this video. But anyway, yeah, Stefan Hassan, I put some respect on her name. She's that girl. And even though she's not American, I love her style of running. I love how the um, Chicago Marathon went. Um, I am curious to see how she does for the ne Netherlands this year because she's going to be back on the track. Because she does mainly like 5,000, 10,000 meters. Um, and that's actually how I knew her. Um, she just started transitioning over to doing marathons, but she's kicking butt the marathon distance too. But anyway, um, but yeah, so my point is I have always been a huge fan of track and field. Uh, and I've always known them by name, the people. Uh, Michael Johnson, I definitely know him. Because that was the year where I really, really wish um, my parents and I had the funds. Because that's when the Olympics were in Atlanta, Georgia. That would have been the time to go. Because it was here in the States. And that is actually on my random bucket list. If the Olympics ever do make it to the States again, I'm going to find a way to go. And honestly, my other bucket list is I do want to go to a World Championships if it's anywhere in the States again. Or at least like the Prefontaine Classic, one of those things. So I think in the future I'm going to try and make one of those things happen. And I apologize if I just rubbed my nose. Um, my allergies yesterday, which is another reason why I did not do my long run this weekend, I could not breathe yesterday. My allergies were on fire. Because whenever it starts raining and stuff like that outside, my sinuses and I can feel it. Because I'm very aller allergic to mold. So there's that. <laughs> Um, but anyway, that's not why we're here. Let's really get into each night. So the Olympics actually started um, on Friday, so this past Friday. And I'm not going to go by round by round of qualifying because that stuff isn't as interesting. I might if it's like our faves, um, more of the name, name people. But I kind of want to get into the finals of things. Um, and on Friday, there really was only one final. Um... But there was something cool that happened on Friday, I want to say. Oh, yeah. We'll talk about that, too. So, anyway, let's get into it. So, the most notable things that happened on Friday um, was we saw Shakari Richardson um, make it through the first heat. Um, so, that was kind of like the prime time thing that they showed. Um, well, not quite the prime time. Uh, yeah, it was a prime time. They would have made that the prime time because she's like a major name. Everyone knows who Shakari Richardson is. My Aries sister. Um, <laughs> she's not good. She's better. Um, we just love competing over here. But anyway, so she um, did not have the best first round, but she did enough to get herself through. Um, so that's good. Um, and then another person that we saw compete... Um, so we also saw, um, for the men's, uh, 400 meters, we saw the notable people that we saw there. That's kind of more of a name. Well, a couple of people that we saw that were kind of interesting stories, um, that we'll get to see how that plays out, um, later on. Um, not with this video, but, um, I'm thinking... I need to see what the rest of the schedule is. So we might see it later, either this sometime this week or over the weekend. I'm pretty sure sometime this week, though. I don't remember when 
it's supposed to air. Because Olympic trials are like, they start Friday, they're going on to like next weekend. So there's that. Um, I think that's the schedule. Um, okay, so then the next person uh, that we saw was, we saw Michael Norman. Michael Norman, um, he's a former Olympian and he's a former world champion of the 400 meters. So we saw him get through his rounds just fine. First round, first heat um, for that. Because, okay, side note. So a lot of these like sprint distances, because there's so many people competing, um, they have heats first, and then they have a semifinal, and then they have a final. And I probably should explain this at the very beginning of the video. The reason why for like the sprinting world versus like the mid to long distance world, you have more people competing um, because part of it is that is usually where people make the money. That's where you get most of your casual fans. Most casual fans like watching sprinters. Um, I don't make the rules. It's just what it is. And I'm, I'm someone who watches all of it. Um, I actually prefer the mid distance, long distance personally, but I also like, I appreciate the sprinting because it, it, you, you get the instant results right away. But, um, so, and it's a different way of racing pretty much. Um, but the other thing is in general, there are a lot, um, for all of these events, there's something called the Olympic standard time or so. For all these events, there, are, in order to even get into the Olympics, winning's not enough. You have to meet the Olympic standards. Now, for sprints. So, sorry to interrupt the video, but <clears throat> this is kind of what the Olympic standards look like. And as you can see here for the sprinting world, if you kind of if you're familiar with watching the sprints, um, yeah, these people get the Olympic standards every day, at least in the United States. Now in the rest of the world, not so much. And I kind of will explain that later on in another video. But then when you start getting to the longer distances, it becomes increasingly a little bit more difficult just because um, with the longer distances, there's a lot more technical, te like sometimes you're not running necessarily um, all the way for speed. Sometimes it's about strategic strategy. There's a lot more strategy um, when it goes into doing the longer runs because there's a lot more time that you can kind of make up and kind of figure things out. And also, if you're someone who's not necessarily someone who is a faster runner, you might try to tire someone out or something trying to run even faster. Like there's so much going into it. But anyway, I just kind of wanted to show you what the standards are currently for the Olympics um, for everyone. So there's that. Now, for sprinting, most sprinters do that anyway when they sprint. Um, but for mid to mid distance to like the distant running, that is not as easy. And I will explain that later on because we have a situation that happened today where all three people won, but they don't have the Olympic standard. And so, I mean, all three people are qualified to go to Olympics. They didn't all win, but they all. Qualified to go to Olympics because it's the top three, you know, gold, silver, bronze for like the national championships, but they didn't meet the Olympic standards. So it makes things a little shaky. Um, but for like your sprinting distance, that usually is already a thing because sprinters are so fast, at least when it comes to the United States. Now, other parts of the world, they might have a little bit more going on, but I can't speak for that because even how other countries do their um, put people in or get people going to Olympics is completely different than the United States. You know, so there's that. Okay, so um, back to the 400 event, men's 400. So besides that, the other story that kind of took place here was that we also saw this 16-year-old who he set the high school so he broke the under 20 record um for 400s and he um qualified he, he won his heat like he got through the heat 
Um, I don't remember if he won the heat or not, but he got through the heat. And the, the thing is, this 16 year old looks like a 16 year old. He, he really does. He is, <laughs> he looks like a kid and he's killing it. So he made it through the first, um, heat. And then we'll talk about him a little bit later because we see him again tonight. But the, by the way, everything I'm talking about all happened on Friday. Okay, um, I, and I think I'll put pictures of everyone I'm talking about a little bit here too, so just to make it easier. Okay, so then the other thing that took place was um, 400 meters, this major story with that was, um, oh, for the women's 400 meters, it's not as much of a story because there isn't really, I hate to say this, but there just isn't really, um, Honestly, ever since Sonia Richards Ross has no longer competed for the 400 meters, we are still kind of the United States, that is. I feel like we're still kind of looking for our star because Allison Felix, you know, that, she retired because she also did the 400s. Um, she also did 400 meters and then Sonia Richards Ross. And Sonia Richards Ross, who's commentating, by the way, when it comes to like this, these events, she's one of the, she's one of the, um, announcers or one of the broadcast um, colleagues for for this and I'm sure she will be for the Olympics too because she she does it every year ever since she's retired um she um no one has broken her record she still she still holds the U.S. American record for the women for the 400 meters so um and right now the best person that I don't know if the women are going to win it. The United States women. So as much as like I'm excited for the women who find, who did end up going. So the final did happen today too. So I'll, I'll get into that a little bit later. But just watching it, just this is my view because I, I watch the sport and follow the sport. They, um, they have a tall task. Because right now the best woman out there, she's Dominican, and she wins. She she runs a very smart race, and she's been on fire for the past two or three years. Yeah. So and I forgot her name. <laughs> I think it's like her name's like uh oh my gosh. I don't remember her name. I'll I'll put it here. Sorry. There's too many people to cover, but anyway. So that's kind of the highlight when it comes to that. For the women's 800, um, Afing Mo, she is a story. So she is the defending Olympic champion, and she did not have a good year last year. She actually got silver place for the world championships last year, which you would think that's like, oh my gosh, that's not that bad. But considering that she was dominating and she just made the she made the 800s look easy, and literally is an 800 meter star. Um, considering the fact that I don't think in the past in the United States we really we really never had um, an 800 meter star like prior to um, prior to Thing Mo, I would say that the 800 meters were in the similar positions with the 400 meters are, where it's really a toss up. Anyone could kind of take it. There was like. We do have um, some people are budding and kind of making a name for themselves, but they're not quite there yet type thing. Um, I would say give it maybe, I don't know, we'll see. We'll just see how the Olympics go because, I mean, they still have about a month and a half to figure it out. But, yeah, because the Olympics are not until August, so they do have some time to, you know, peak, get to the training, get to where they need to be. So this was her first race of the season, by the way, Ping Mo, which is, that's not normal. <laughs> Normally, you get some racing and running under your belt before the Olympic trials, but her first heat was her first run of the season, and she still, she, she got through just fine. Um, so that was the story with that. Um, with the men's steeplechase. There was a lot of interesting, interesting stories with that. So, um, Hillary Barrow, um, he's back and he did not, 
he had a rough year last year because he broke his foot and just had a rough, rough year. And he's probably one of our better um, steeplechase guys. And then the other kind of name, U.S. name, that is a big deal in the steeplechase world. And I... That's what got me interested to watching the sport just because I was like, oh my gosh, he's from he's from the Midwest. Evan Jager. And Evan Jager, he actually is from a suburb outside of Chicago. Actually, a suburb I used to live right by. And he went to the high school over there and stuff too. So when you hear his name, us Chicagoans kind of know who he is just because he's like from this area. Um but, and he kind of put the sport on the map when it came to the United States. Like, um, steeple chasing, which is kind of an odd sport, I feel like, for a lot of people because they feel like it looks like something that an equestrian should be doing. I feel like a lot of people feel that way when they watch it. But if you knew the skill set that it takes to do that, that means you're just like one of the best runners in the world, period. Because you have the coordination, you have the speed. I just think it's a special type of discipline to be able to do that. And he was someone who put the sport on the map and he's still competing. So it was a big deal that he was like even on the field because he had, he's been plagued with energy, um, a lot of some, some major injuries lately. And also too, he took time off from sport because I think he had a child um, and he's in his thirties. So he's in track and field world. He's getting older. He's a veteran. And a lot of the people who are on, who raced around him, um, were, you know, they're fans <laughs> because most of, a lot of the people that he's competing with, you know, they just, a lot of them are just either got out of college or like they're in their twenties. So they're looking up to him. Like it's like the, the, the guy, you know, like, oh my gosh, you're, you're Evan Jager. Um, <laughs> so yeah, there's that. Um, so then the other thing I would say is then the other person that was kind of a big deal story-wise that they're kind of following was, um, I think his name's Kenneth Rook. He won the national championship last year after he took a horrible fall. And steeple chasing when you fall, it's, that could be, you could be done. You could be done. Um, for example, the counterpart, Emma Colborn, who's like kind of like a major U.S. name for like the steeple chasing, she's out for the season because she had a really, really bad fall and broke her foot. Like that's all it takes is a bad fall and you'll break your foot. Like it's because the her, the barriers, I don't want to call them hurdles because they're not hurdles. They're taller than hurdles. And they're literally the same barriers that horses use to, I mean, I don't know if they are, but they're very similar to that. I'm going to say similar because I don't know if they're the same. But there's no give. If you hit it, it's not, that's, that's no bueno. So anyway, um, he did that. He fell, but he didn't, clearly he didn't hurt himself. And he came back in the same race and won. So that's the other person they're kind of following. And the reason why I'm mentioning his name, because spoiler alert, the finals happened today and he was kind of a huge part of it. So I just wanted to like kind of put that out there. And then the other person was some guy, and I'll get his name, um, a guy from Wisconsin. No, not Wisconsin. Wow. Minnesota. My bad. My bad. My bad. My bad. Um, so this for. Um, steeple chasing for the men. There were a couple of names that are out there, but like they're both kind of on the tail end of the career. So I think this is another event where we're going to see some new stars, you know, break out. Um, but the difference is the, the veterans are still kind of in there. So you still have the people that people know, the names that people know. Um, Okay, so what else happened in this event? So then the other highlight I would say is um, the men's decathlon. That was kind of a major deal. Um, actually,
actually, we'll, we'll go into the men's decathlon tomorrow because that concluded. So it started, it started today. I mean, it started on Friday, but concluded on Saturday. So we'll, we'll go into who won that and all that. Um, and then for the men's, um, 10,000 meters, that was an interesting, I mean, an interesting, um, finals. And the reason why I'm going to say it was interesting, the guy who kind of was making the job easy for everyone and leading it for most of, most of the race was Connor Hans. And for those who are familiar, he's the winner for the um, U.S. Marathon Trials. So the U.S. Marathon Trials happened earlier on, which also is going to be happening in Paris too. But it happened earlier on. So anyone who did the marathon could, you know, technically do try to qualify and get into, you know, the other races. So he led most of the race. But then he got overpowered at the end. Like, he really wasn't leading the race. I think he was leading the race, but I think the people... <laughs> I feel like the guy who won was in control the whole entire time. It was one of those. Like, okay, I'm going to let you do the hard work, and then I'm going to pass you at the end type thing. And for those who are not runners, that is, like, very, very smart. It is very hard to lead the pack the whole entire time. And then just like win it. Because you're kind of running blindly to a certain extent. Not so much in track and field because the track and field, most of the track and field places, especially Hayward Field where they do the Olympic trials at, they have a giant, they have a giant screen where they can kind of see when they're doing the laps of where everyone's at. But in general, it's it's hard. Um, especially if there's wind. You know, you want to be, you want to be somewhat in front, but you don't necessarily want to lead. You want to be able to, when the time is right to execute your plan, be able to execute. And the three who ended up winning did exactly that. Uh, the other thing that occurred was Paul Chalimo, who is a vet, who is um, a veteran in the sport. And, um, kind of like a mentor to a lot of the runners there. And I think he's also a silver medalist because I thought he won the silver or bronze. I can't remember. He's won. He, he's, he's a former Olympian. I'm pretty sure he's won before. Um, he's kind of a, yeah. I think, I can't remember if it was Rio or if it was um, London. I it might have been, no. I think it was Rio. Might have been real. I can't remember which one he did his thing, but he's done his thing. But he's kind of a veteran in the sport. So he led for a little bit too, but he was, by the way, this Friday, that Friday that they were doing all this, it was clearly warm in that field because you just saw a lot of athletes pouring water all over themselves. So that was definitely a thing. Um, and then I was trying to see if there was anyone else who were, running that were kind of veterans of this sport. Oh yeah, Sam um, Chalana, he's a veteran of the sport. So he was, um, yeah, he also um, led for a little bit too, but not that long. So there were a couple of veterans of this, of this sport that are there, but the people who, oh, and then the other person who competed who also ran the marathon was Zach Panning. And shout out to him because he is a fellow Hoosier. He's actually from where I'm from. And we went to the same high school, much younger than me, but he is an alumni of the same high school I went to. So, and the high school I went to, there's, a lot of cross country stars that come out of that, that end up well doing what he's doing. Um, so I'm not that surprised, but <laughs> so shout out to him. He actually ended up placing a 15th place. I know that sounds like that's a lot, like, you know, pretty far, but 
I, I guess watching it, I didn't necessarily expect him to win just because I knew he was probably going to win. <laughs> so let's get into how it ended up happening. So what ended up happening was we had, um, Grant Fisher, who was a favorite of this race, he just ended up taking over the race. He kind of got sick of the back and forth when it came to the pace and he just took it over and then no one was catching him. And then, except for Woody Kincaid almost did. Um, so, and then a guy who just got out of, I think he just got out of like running um, in college, so he's not a professional athlete. He's not pro yet. Rico Young um, ended up getting in there too. So one, two, three. So it was Grant Fisher, Woody Kincaid, and Rico Young from um, Northern Arizona. I don't know what college though he. Cause he had a college thing on, so he's not he's not a professional athlete. Um, but all but the thing that was good about this was this made it easy because all three who won were the only three that had the Olympic standard. So they know they're going. So they're going and that's that on that. And this took me way longer to review <laughs> night one of the Olympics, Olympic trials. So I'm going to make other videos for the other two. So please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melanin Nostalgic Runner, and I will see you next time. Bye.